This episode of Techzilla is brought to you by the 2012 Ford Mustang. Fear the pineapple. Our friends at Hack5 live to showcase Wi-Fi attacks and hacks using the little plastic pineapple of doom, which they've just updated with a, quote, secret feline attack mode. <laughs> Here to give us a hands-on demo is Hack5's very own Shannon Snubs Morris. I feel like I'm being social engineered right now. You might be. Secret feline attack yes. mode. Okay. I know the pineapple's real. Should we explain yes. the pineapple? So this is the Wi-Fi pineapple, which mm -hmm. was originally built a couple of years ago, actually. Do you like our little sticker? It's, it's and it's a he. I gave he. it a gender. Isn't it cute? So this router, uh, we updated the firmware so that mm -hmm. it can do all sorts of man-in-the-middle attacks. And a man-in-the-middle attack is when you log into something that's pretending to be something else before it gives you the kind information of. on the something yeah. else so it can grab the information you're passing to the something else. Sort of. So okay. have you ever done like one of those telephone games when you were in elementary school where mm -hmm. you start with one person, say a phrase through like 20 kids, and by the end, it's always something different. It starts out as, please pass me the milk, and it ends up, please stuff me into a locker. Exactly. Yeah, right. something like that. And the last person, it, it always sucks to be the last person, right? So this guy works kind of like that, where you have a victim on one end, you have the Wi-Fi pineapple I Mark III. I make that clear. You have a victim A victim one PC end. on one end. Yeah, let me hold this up for you real quick. The Wi-Fi pineapple Mark III in the middle, and then on the other end, you have the internets. And then going through the Wi-Fi pineapple, he's collecting all sorts of information, data and packets, usernames and passwords maybe, or he might be doing just uh, changing the websites. Is this essentially a very small wireless access point that's battery powerable and easily concealable so you could say put it outside of the office of a professional competitor yes. and suck down all their life? Yeah, it could be. Could be. That yeah. would be a completely <laughs> illegal use. I mean, you could use it for that or you could do good with it for, yes. you know, penetration testing for a, a, a co company that you're legally obligated right. to hack into. So part, one of the I want to point out, we're going to be talking a little bit later on, is what to do to keep yourself from being stomped and attacked by vicious weasels with <laughs> access to hacking tools. But this is a legitimate tool and it's used for yes. legitimate purposes to protect businesses and individuals. The, is it the is it the Jassiger attack? I see the, that. Ja the Zaga. Tiny, ja Zaga. Yeah, it's a German word that means yes man. And the reason why we call it that is because it comes with this tool called Karma on mm -hmm. it. So Karma is basically taking advantage of that convenience that we have with uh, auto connecting to all of those Wi-Fi routers mm -hmm. that we are really familiar with. So for example, when you go home to your to your own house, right. you open up your your laptop and you say, oh, I want to connect to. Uh, Patrick's home router. My name that I will not mention on air in case anyone's in my neighborhood. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. So when you connect to it, you're you're automatically connected. You don't, you don't have to it. go in and manually do it every time. Right. We're we're taking advantage of that and auto connecting you to this guy instead. Dun dun dun. Dun dun dun. So he's sitting in the middle, and whenever your laptop sends out this thing called a probe request mm -hmm. to the Wi-Fi router, he's sitting in the middle going, "Oh, you're looking for Patrick's uh, home router." Hmm. Yeah, oh, that's me. So you should connect to me. My name is Patrick's home router. So you actually connect to him and you never know the difference. That's a little frightening. It is. It's very frightening. He, you're saying that with this like look of glee on your face. It's kind of terrifying. Because it's so cool. It's, it's scary, but it's cool at the same time that this kind of technology is, is possible. Mm -hmm. So basically, is this essentially sort of a modified wireless access point? Yes. Okay. Exactly. Yeah, he's, he's just a regular router that you can buy online, mm -hmm. but we just updated all the firmware on him. So he also has this really cool tool on him called DNS spoof. <laughs> You're laughing. Congress is working on don't DNS spoofing. It's okay. No, 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 no. Yeah, it's, it's sorry. I don't want to get into the SOPA thing. I was, I was <laughs> so, a little cranky about SOPA before we started taping today. So the DNS spoof is where this kitten module idea comes from, this, this whole feline interface that we were talking about earlier. Uh, basically, whenever you get on your computer and you open up your browser and you want to go to a website, say, revision3.com. You should pull up my computer in the control room right now. <laughs> you, you go to the DNS server for revision3.com mm -hmm. and the DNS server says, oh, the IP address for revision3 is you know, 1.2.3.4 or whatever that might be. So instead, my little router right here, the Wi-Fi Pineapple, says, Yazaga, yes, man, that's me. So I'm actually 1.2.3.4, but in reality, I'm going to send you to 172.42 or .16.42.1, which is this router instead of revision three. And I get a cat. So you get a cat, which is specifically my cat. 
the secret feline attack, as it were. Yes. No, this was, <laughs> it was, it was, yeah, I can't mention Goatsy, we're a family show, but this, this, this is, okay, don't, you dare Google that if you don't know what it is. And if you do, remember. It wasn't me. What has been seen cannot be him. unseen. We had somebody pull uh, uh, one of the unmentionable attacks at a, uh, uh, oh no! I, I, actually, oh, no. I don't want to know. <laughs> well, I was on a panel with Leo, myself, and somebody else, and what was really funny is I knew from the facial expression who in the crowd was doing it, and oh, I like left awesome. the panel and walked over and <laughs> tapped them on the shoulder, and they looked over their shoulder and, like, Boom! I'm like, just turn it off, dude. Ouch! No harm, no foul. Okay, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, he was he was actually pretty cool about it, but yeah, it was like <laughs> Leo's face when that picture came up was. Uh, was priceless. Maybe I shouldn't mention that I've never seen any of those things. But well, you, but so it's really, it's, it's kind of, this is serious though, right? This is serious. It's very serious. Instead of kittens, I could be uh, putting up a fake Revision 3 website and right. I could be like, oh, you must uh, change your password now. Right. Or enter in your credit card number or because you you're that. on, you know. You could enter in any anything that I wanted, really. I could, I could make you enter that in so I could collect that information. I could spoof it. I could fish a website if I wanted to. I'm in the textile audience. How do I protect myself from people like you? Okay. Well, there are five really, really good practices that you can use to make sure that this type of attack mm -hmm. never happens to you. The first one is, and I know it's a pain in the butt, but it's really important. Turn off auto connect. You mean enter in my password every time I enter my home or my place of business? Exactly. To log on to my Wi-Fi? I know, I know, it's a pain in the butt, but that means that you won't automatically connect to, say, GoGo in-flight when you're on the ground, which right. is obviously a Wi-Fi pineapple, because you can only get on that when you're in a plane. Well, yeah. Duh. Another one you can do is use HTTPS. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a really nice plugin through Firefox from uh, the EFF.org. It's called HTTPS Everywhere, and it helps you log in no matter where you are, in case you forget, you're always on HTTPS. This is a good thing. Mm -hmm. It's really important. Another one is no open Wi-Fi. So if you go to Starbucks and you get on the AT&T Wi-Fi, that's like so easy to fish and attack. Never use public Wi-Fi, and if you do use public Wi-Fi, for example, you're at Las Vegas at CES and McCarran and you're waiting for hours, mm -hmm. and your battery and your mobile is run out, use a, <laughs> just. You can you, do a VPN. Yeah, use a VPN yeah. to a safe place. Yes, you can do VPNs or SSH tunnels. A lot of the ones that we've mentioned on our show are uh, Weetopia, uh, Viper VPN. Mm -hmm. Both of those cost money. If you want to go the cheap route, you can always build your own, which we did a demo on Hack5 mm -hmm. for. It was OpenVPN, mm -hmm. and that one's completely free. Very easy ways to keep yourself nice and safe. And if you're still paranoid and you don't feel that great about doing your own VPN, which I know it sounds kind of complicated, you can always just get a little dongle. You could get a 3G or 4G modem dongle, which connects physically into right. your machine. So there's no kind of wireless access going between the dongle don't and your computer. use the hotel computer. Wi-Fi. Yes, exactly. Do you know how many people did that at DEF CON? Oh my gosh, bad. Mm -hmm. yeah, everybody's like, my computer's hardened and secured. I can't be a Yeah, so they say, and then somebody hacks into it. Awesome stuff as always, Shannon. Where can we find more of Shannon Morrison Hack 5? You can find me over on Twitter. I'm really easy to reach, snubs. <laughs> S-N-U-B-S. <laughs> and you can find us, all of our information over at hak5.org. I highly recommend it. It's a great website and a great show, and they got cool stuff you can buy and use for good. Let's take a moment to thank one of our sponsors. Hey, like we told you last week, we managed to get the Mustang back with the Big Nation guys. It was ugly, but they turned it over. Everybody's been trying to get their hands on the 2012 Ford Mustang. And I'll tell you what, when we got it in our hands, it is usually not hard to find somebody willing to grab some treats for our weekly programming meeting. Phone, please say a command. Call Jessica. Calling Jessica Atkinson. Hello? Hey Jessica, it's Patrick. We're heading to uh, Anthony's. What kind of cookies do you want? Um, great. All right, chocolate chip. We're on that. See you in a couple. Patrick here, 2012 Ford Mustang. We're on our way to Anthony's. We're picking up cookies for the weekly programming meeting because quite frankly, nothing is happier than a sugar-filled program meeting. It goes faster, people are happier, cookies are good. And you know what? Getting cookies in the 2012 Ford Mustang? Fine. Go get cookies. Uh, we're gonna need two dozen cookies. So what, cookies and cream, chocolate chip, cinnamon spice, um, oatmeal raisin, and peanut butter, please. Bet you wish you were here. 
Line in. Please say a command. Services. Connecting. Services. Google Maps has sent you to Red Queen 765, Pennsylvania Avenue South in Francisco. You have arrived at your destination. Route guidance is now finished. Thanks again to Ford, the 2012 Mustang, for sponsoring Techzilla.